Good morning children. This is Aisha again. It's a bright day and I think a good time to start learning a new topic. In today's module, I shall be teaching you about the various types of chemical reactions. I have already taught you in my previous video how to write a chemical equation using symbols and formulae and also how to balance them. So I think it won't be much a problem for you to understand today's module. But in case, children, if you have any doubt, then please watch that video first and then come to this. So let us talk about the types of chemical reactions. As you know, that there are so many chemical reactions and it's hard for anyone to memorize all of them. So for our convenience, the various chemical reactions have been majorly classified into five types over here. The first one is chemical combination reaction. It's also called as a synthesis reaction. Chemical decomposition reaction. Chemical displacement reaction. Fourth one is a chemical double displacement reaction. And redox reaction. So, let's learn about each one of them in detail. The first one is a combination reaction, chemical combination reaction. In these types of reaction, you can see over here, two or more reactants or substances combine to form a single substance or a product. You can see over here, it's a general equation for combination reaction. Any two substances or more substances combine to form a single product or a single substance. So let us just uh, give some examples for this kind of reaction. You can see over here, hydrogen reacts with oxygen or I can say hydrogen combines with oxygen to form a single product that is water. Another example, another simple example you can see over here which is nothing but magnesium combining with oxygen. So magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. So in both the cases you can see that there are two or more reactants actually the here there are two reactants combining to form a single product so this is what is combination reaction all about one more thing to notice in these two examples is that both the reactants are elements here hydrogen is an element oxygen is also an element magnesium is an element oxygen is also an element both the elements here combine to form a compound but it doesn't always mean that only elements combine to form a compound there are examples where even compounds combine to form a different compound a new compound i'll give you an example where calcium oxide combines with water to form calcium hydroxide so you can see over here calcium oxide is also is a compound and water is also a compound both the compounds are combining to form a different product a different compound so two compounds forming a single product so combination reaction Hope you understood this children. Now let us come to the decomposition reaction. In the decomposition reaction, one compound, a single larger compound, breaks down into two or more simpler substances. So a single substance, larger substance, breaks down into two or more simpler substances these substances can be either compounds or elements and basically this is the general reaction where a b this is one compound which is breaking down into its individual or what you call into different 
substances which can be either elements or compounds. Going before going to the examples, let us see the subtypes of decomposition reaction. The decomposition reaction can be again of three types. They are thermolytic decomposition, electrolytic decomposition and photolytic decomposition. So, if the decomposition is happening with the help of thermal energy or nothing but heat, it is called as thermolytic decomposition. You can see it in the name itself, thermo means heat and lytic means breakdown. So, if the breakdown is happening because of heat, then it is called as thermolytic decomposition. One best example is that of a calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is a compound. If you heat this compound, it breaks down into two simpler compounds, which are calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So, what is making it to break? Heat energy is utilized for breaking this compound. So, it is nothing but it comes under thermolytic decomposition. If it is electrolytic decomposition, can you guess children? The lysis or the breakdown is happening because of electric current. So, when electricity is passed and the compound is breaking down, it is called as electrolytic decomposition. The best example is the electrolysis of water. When water, when electricity is passed through water, then it breaks down into its individual constituents, which are nothing but hydrogen and oxygen. And if the breakdown is mainly done by photo, photo means what here? Light. So, if the breakdown is happening because of the light, then it is called as photolytic decomposition. So, one best example is that of a silver chloride. So, the silver chloride, if you expose it to sunlight, it breaks down into silver and chlorine silver metal and chlorine gas. So, this is mainly used, this was mainly used in black and white photography in the olden days and the photographic film uh, was coated with AgCl, silver chloride. So, this was again, this was then exposed to sunlight and which decomposed and gave the black and white image. Did you understand children? So, decomposition reaction is nothing but, it is a reaction where a single compound or a single substance breaks down into two or more simpler substances. It can be done with the help of heat, electric current or light. Another interesting type of chemical reaction is the chemical displacement reaction. You can see over here, please do listen to this very carefully. A more reactive element displaces a lesser reactive element from its compound and forms a new compound. I repeat, a more reactive element displaces a lesser reactive element from its compound and it occupies its place forming a new compound. So, in order to understand the displacement reactions well, you have to have an idea of the metal reactivity series in order to know which element is more reactive and which one is lesser reactive, you need to have a, a good uh, knowledge about the metal reactivity series. We have already learned this in our 8th class, haven't we children? So, you can see this is the metal reactivity series starting from potassium and you know, continuing till platinum. 
so you can see from top to bottom the reactivity decreases so you can see here we have potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium zinc iron tin lead hydrogen copper uh, mercury silver gold and platinum so you can see potassium is the most reactive element and platinum is the least reactive element you can have some mnemonic actually to memorize these so it can be like psc mazit l chap psc mazit l chap anyways you can remember this in your own ways i've taken the first letter of the element actually and here i have just uh, taken up uh, the symbol just you know you can memorize it well in your own way you can memorize it now let us consider these examples zinc when it reacts with hcl it forms zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is evolved now let us see zinc is a metal which is more reactive than hydrogen if you see the reactivity series zinc is above hydrogen and hydrogen is below zinc so what does it mean hydrogen is lesser reactive than zinc or in other words zinc is more reactive than hydrogen so what does it do it displaces hydrogen or it removes hydrogen from its compound hcl and it takes its place and zinc takes its place forming a new compound zinc chloride and hydrogen gas is just released out in the similar manner let us consider another example iron what happens when iron nail is dipped in a copper sulfate solution does this reaction look familiar children yes we have learned this in our lower classes 7th and 8th classes haven't we yeah what happens now iron being more reactive than copper how would we know that iron is more reactive than copper let's go back to our metal reactivity series where is iron here and where is copper here so you can see that iron is above copper that means it is more reactive than copper so iron being more reactive it removes copper from its compound and it takes its place forming a new compound called iron sulfate and copper is just displaced out so you can see over here what is happening here iron is displacing copper and forming a new compound iron sulfate and copper is released out so here you can see a change in the color too blue colored copper sulfate solution turns to pale green indicating the displacement reaction there is a reactivity series of non metals also can see here children this is the simple reactivity series of the non metals fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine and fluorine being the most reactive metal and iodine being the least reactive one so here also as you go down you can understand now that the reactivity decreases now we can understand in any equation if there is fluorine and iodine fluorine will displace iodine from its compound now speaking about the double decomposition reactions so here two compounds react with each other and exchange their ions what is happening over here two compounds react with each other and they exchange their ions resulting in the formation of two different products so here is the general equation for double decomposition reactions so a compound ab reacts with another compound cd and they both exchange their radicals such that the new products formed would be 
AD and CB. Let's consider some examples for better understanding. Silver nitrate react with sodium chloride and form sodium nitrate and silver chloride. So in order, in order to understand this in a much better manner, let us first split them into their respective ions. So we have now Ag plus and NO3 minus Na plus and Cl minus. So before we go further, uh, what do you mean by an ion children? What do you mean by an ion? So it's nothing but an atom or molecule with a net charge. It can be either negative or positive. What is an ion? It's an atom or a molecule with a net electric charge due to the loss or gain of one or more electrons. Due to the loss or gain of one or more electrons. We have learned this in our 8th class. How cations and anions are formed. Do you remember children? So what is a cation? So an atom if it loses electron it gets a positive charge. And if an atom if it loses uh, if it gains electron it gets a net negative charge. Right? So positive ions are called as cations and negative ions are called as anions. So let us come back to our double decomposition example. So we have split them into their respective ions. Now let us consider A as Ag and B as NO3, C as Na plus and D as Cl minus. Now what happens in a double decomposition reaction? There will be an exchange of ions. Here you have to remember that you can either exchange the cations or you can exchange the anions. So let us exchange the cations over here. Let us exchange Ag and Na+. So Na goes into the place of Ag and Ag takes the place of Na. So what could be the products now formed? So NaNO3 is formed and AgCl is formed. Both are new products. Did you understand this children? What is happening over here? Two compounds are exchanging their ions forming two different products. In a similar manner you have here another example. NaOH, sodium hydroxide and HCl that is hydrochloric acid. They exchange their ions and form different compounds NaCl and water, sodium chloride and water. Does this reaction remind you of anything else children? Yes, it is nothing but a neutralization reaction, isn't it? Where an acid and a base react with each other forming salt and water, they neutralize each other. So coming to uh, talking about speaking about the double decomposition point of view we have here sodium plus cation OH minus anion H plus cation and Cl minus anion. So if you exchange this time let us exchange the you can exchange either cations or anions children but not both. What will happen if you exchange both you will get back again the same reactants. So you need to either exchange the cations or exchange the anions. So let us see now by exchanging the anions. Chlorine takes the place of OH and OH takes the place of chlorine forming NaCl and H2O. 